We have some more breaking news, and uh, another one of the Cowboys players has decided to leave. The big question is going to be how much will this impact their quality? Another depth piece in the form of Jonathan Hankins, the best one-technique defensive tackle they've had in a long time. Maybe the best uh, defensive tackle they've had since Jay Ratliff. Uh, he's gone to the Seattle Seahawks, right, Wolchuk? Yep, he's going to join Aiden Dirty, who, of course, left to be their defensive coordinator in Seattle. So Cowboys now really only one tech on the roster. I guess they did re-sign Carl Davis, but I don't think we're super bullish on him. But Mozzie. Wouldn't count on that one there. So, uh, yeah, that's another position of need. <laughs> How about defensive tackle? Yeah. Yeah, it's tough watching these Cowboys. Um, and I, I do want to know from you guys, isn't it starting to feel like, like the 2011, 12, 13 Cowboys where you still had some names? I mean, it was D-Ware, and, you know, at the start there, it was still uh, a, a T-New and, you know, Brady James, Keith Brooking. But the, 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 the working class, the supporting cast, players 15 through 50 were just picked clean and replaced with either super young guys or super old guys. And that ended up costing the Cowboys, you know, three or four wins off of, you know, the pace they'd set late in the Wade Phillips years. Yeah, this is um, this is not necessarily surprising, I would say, uh, but it is a little bit just added to the list of things that you still need right now. Um, so, I, mean, I, mean, the, the I don't think you're drafting it. The collection of players they've lost, though, I, I feel like now we're in the range of expecting a major fall off. You know what? What Hankins did for this team was actually made them not suck totally against the run. No, if the, you don't fix him, you will suck worse against the run than you did last year, which was bad. Yeah. I mean, it was like a yard per play difference with him on and off the field. So, hey, I mean, that's another area where depending on who's available, we talk about second round guys. We Yesterday, we were talking about Braden Fisk out of Florida State, Man. Devondre Sweat out of Texas. Depending on who else is there, what they do in the first round, maybe that is uh, up for consideration. Uh, Mason Smith, defensive tackle out of LSU, another big boy that they met with apparently at the combine could be an option on day three. Jackson from Texas A&M, would yeah, be a consideration uh, yep, there absolutely. As well. So I mean, there's some. So they've been doing some homework on this. Position. I mean, I know Zim's probably insisting on one, and he got himself a linebacker. But at some point, if you're the Joneses, you're you're like, I know you really like this guy for your defense to work, but you might only be here for a year. So I don't know how much you weigh that up when you're talking about high draft assets. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, you know, I I think you should definitely put defensive tackle, even though you have the first rounder Mozzie Smith on the roster, you've got to include that in the needs. Where would you consider or how would it fall for you if I told you you can have a running back or in the second round or one of these defensive tackles, we're talking about Sweat or Fisk? I would like the defensive tackle. You know, I don't, I, I don't want to start getting into the territory on day three where you're hopeful the guy can eventually be I, a rotation. I hate to say this. I feel like it can make this running back group stretch a little bit. I agree. I don't you. think I can make the one stretch. No, I think I would have to pull the trigger on a Braden Fisk. And, and honestly, I would have him higher, I don't know about you, than any of those running backs anyway. But, I mean, defensive mm. tackle would have to be clearly better than offensive line to take that in the second well, round. Well, I'm thinking about this. You're probably going to grab a tackle or the center yeah, maybe in the it'll first round. Offensive You're going to take an offensive line in the first round. Now the second round turns around if you have the running one of these running backs. Okay, say so you had Brooks. Brooks or Fisk? Fisk. Brooks being from Texas. I would take, running, I would take Fisk. I, they, I do know they like Jonathan Brooks a lot, though. But this Hankins deal is going to end up probably being under four mil, maybe two to three mil. I mean, he is an older guy. He's not anywhere close to an every down type of player. Mm-hmm. But in big running downs, he was uh, key for the Cowboys. And again, they're signaling that's too much for them. I, I think it's a perfect oh. segue into this piece from Todd Archer, Brian. Yeah, I, I feel like, though, too, that what Zach's talking about, I think Aiden Derdy up there helped. Yeah, I think Aiden went in there and said, listen, you know, we we don't have as 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 he went up there and studied for the last several weeks and studied that defense in Tampa, or excuse me, t- uh, Seattle. He's probably figured out I don't have a run stopping defensive tackle here. Yeah, and so he politely probably went into John Snyder's office and said, "Hey, uh, would you be interested in this guy? I coached him. Let me vouch for him." I think that's how that ended up. Yeah, yeah, and you know, Zim's vouched for his guys. Yeah. With Kendricks. Yeah, Todd Archer's piece in the Cowboys' free agent philosophy. Puzzling quote from Stephen Jones here. Uh, As Todd set out to give an explanation as to why they build the way that they build, and he says it's almost as if fans don't believe Steve when he says this stuff. 
Uh, he says, I've always been of the ilk that in the first couple days of free agency, you pay good players like they're great and you pay average players like they're good and so on and so forth. And I understand that, you know, I, I think that is the price that you pay in, in order to fill all of your holes on your team with above average players. And if you're not willing to do that, you're not you know, willing to do what it takes to build a championship roster, in my opinion. But my real thought is, why is it OK to do that with your quarterback then, Steve? Okay. I, I want to start a list of questions here that we can get into starting next year. Mm. Um as these topics come up that are just absolute head scratchers and to me create a double standard. So he gets the logic of it. You don't want to pay good players like they're great. And you, uh, but you sure as hell did that with Terrence Steele. You know, you sure as hell did that with Tony Pollard, but more importantly, Dak is the one that just gives you annual reminders of his status as a non elite player, but you pay him as an elite one. And that, really hacked me off today guys because once again it proves they're smarter than this they know exactly what they're doing and um you know they treat this team like an investment portfolio that that you invest in and you keep it healthy but you don't want to be unbalanced you don't want to risk too much you don't want to go all in because you know there's too much risk on that and the risk is it could cause you to have to cut players that you know you market around that have given you some level of regular season success um but then the other part is you know when he talks about how we've drafted so well that this is how we have to team build cuz we end up paying all those guys i get that too but what just happened is you failed the draft in a big, big way. And if your plan is to draft your way to a championship, I'm okay with it. You have two, three good drafts in a row. I'm like, cool, this is going in the right direction. Maybe you'll have no holes on your team. By the way, you're about to have to pay those guys that you drafted three years ago. But hey, this is your strategy. Once you fail epically, you're done. That's what the Cowboys are. In order to maintain their level while going through this financial transition, they would have had to have last year find three players that could damn near be starters and then do it again this year. And that creates just, you know, way too high of a bar. Is it possible, Brian, to just have nothing but good drafts? I don't know if you've ever seen it in all of no, your years I, in the NFL. No, it's you not. can't have five good ones in a row. If you have three good ones in a row, you are really outperforming expectations. Even a good draft is considered you had seven picks and three guys turned out to be yeah. good players. Yeah. I mean, it's not even like a good draft is the bar of yeah. every player hits. Yeah. So it's, it's very difficult. And I think the other issue with this is they're at times too married to, oh, we drafted this guy, so we want to keep him. Because you've also, you can talk about not wanting to pay free agents because you're paying premium money for just okay players. But how many times have they turned around and given money to just okay players on their own team? Yeah. Good point. Or, just, or maybe he's not an okay player, but just the position. You did it with Zeke. You just did it with Pollard. Guys off injury. Terrence Steele. Oh, we're going to give you money. Like, you're scared to give a right tackle and free agency money, but you're willing to give it to this guy who's off an injury. You did it with your quarterback off an injury. You did it with Michael Gallup. Gallup. You did it with Jalen Smith. So these are all guys Mm. that, I mean, I guess if they they were free agents, the Cowboys would be like, oh my gosh, these were terrible deals. But since they were from in-house and they drafted them, all of a sudden now they have this different perspective on them and much more optimistic view of who these players actually are. Well, and I think they they feel like they're getting a bargain on the deal. Because of that, they're like, okay, so we're we're getting uh, an offer, and you're taking less to stay with us. They think they're winning the deal yeah. in that situation. To them, it's it, it's a plus. But in reality, they're not getting any type of return on that investment with these second contracts. They're not aging well for them at all. The other thing he said in the past is, we know the guys fit our system. We know yeah. their medical history very yeah. very well, and I get that as well. Um, but you know, the the teams that win excel at finding guys that are maybe playing in a different system but they know these traits and this coach is going to be able to put them in a position to succeed um even at a higher level or or maintain that same level Uh, i think maybe the brandon carr thing you know maybe made them a a, a little bit gun shy they also were in on namdi awesome the year before well brandon carr he 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 played out his entire contract it wasn't a terrible sign no i mean it was a a player in the 50 million dollars but they didn't let him go early he played the. He got every dime that he signed up for, if you remember correctly on that. 
Yeah. So they, they did, you know, to me, to them, that was, you know, they could talk about maybe they got a little uh, shy on it, but, you know, they, 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 they rode the whole contract. But then, then Todd touches on what I think can only be described as the unrelenting optimism that Jerry has brainwashed the fan base. Mm-hmm. He hasn't, though. I, I mean, okay, I, I'll say this. I think I think fans more than ever now are tired of of tired of it. They're, they're, I, we talk about the brain. You say brainwashing. I think fans. Have, I think fans. You think have, they're snapping out of it. I think they have. That would be I, great. My my just my interaction with fans on a daily and reading timelines and stuff like that. I, I think fans have have had enough enough. And okay. They, I, and, and and I and I talk to several of them quite, and I'm on different platforms. Mm-hmm. So I get that opportunity. I just feel like that the fans like you're not going to fool me anymore. Okay. I, I'm done with I'm done with you. And 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 it was to your it's to your statement yeah. that he made mm-hmm. the all the all in yes you know and that that's all when, in my ass that's I, when, I, at I, that I, point people have now given up on that. I I hope that was the last breath of Jerry as that's, a pitchman yeah. that you yeah. had that has credibility yeah. now. We'll have to see. The proof will be in the pudding this year. If they go on a three-game winning streak and the fans are shouting you down if you say, I don't think they're good enough even though they've won three games in a row, yeah. and they're saying things like, you can't style point a yeah. win. It's hard to win in this league. This yeah. team's good, Dawson. You know yeah. it. If they're yelling at me like that, I'll be like, they're still brainwashed. Okay. Todd Archer writes here, yeah. this year, they drew lines on how much money they could uh, pay Smith, Pollard, Biotish, and Armstrong and did not budge. The departures might not be over. Defensive tackle Jonathan Hankins might leave. He wrote this early this morning. J- Hankins just did leave. Gilmore, recovering from shoulder surgery, could sign elsewhere too. The Cowboys could certainly adjust cost-effective players in the coming days and weeks, but they're hanging their hat on the ability to draft since VP of uh, player personnel, Will McClay, took over the draft yes. in 2014, has had 13 draft picks named to at least one Pro Bowl. And then... Um, Crap. I lost my point in my story here. Uh, Pop-up ad hit you? Yeah, I, I copied and pasted the wrong thing. Oh, well, anyway, like I said, I'm going to I would, I'm gonna go on record and say I feel like that they're they're feeling a little pressure over there with the scouts. About the, I, about I would the absolutely draft. as well. About, about, they, about the they draft. Should. They, I mean, they, they've they, unfairly been placed in this they, situation they done, where all of it those is. Those scouts have done a hell of a job over there. And now they realize, like after last year, what happened, and we'll see what happens with all the, you know, all those picks. But there, there is a lot of pressure on that crew. And every so, well, that's their job, you know. No, well, yeah, it's their job, but it ain't their job to say, okay, we've got a hit on six, seven guys every time we go, we every time we roll up here and draft. You know, you're talking about if you hit on three of them, you're doing pretty good. They'll put you in the damn Hall of Fame for that, right? But now you're having to you're having to supplement so many guys walking out the door, replace guys. They put a lot of pressure on those scouts to to come up with to make sure that their board is absolutely how they need to to in order to draft. They they can't afford a mistake. They can't afford a miss. No, they can't. No, because they're not going to send anybody. And I, I I can't believe I, I I can't find this story from Todd Archer on ESPN Dallas. But the the basic premise of what I was getting to there was they keep telling you they're not spending money on free agents. And Cowboys fans keep getting surprised this time of year. I can't believe what they're doing. This has been going on for a decade plus yeah, now. It has. Of Stephen Jones telling you we're not spending money. And every single time the season ends... Fans are like, well, they can't just do that again, and then they do it. And that's like the unrelenting optimism and brainwashing that I speak of. I, I give Todd Archer all the credit in the world for pointing that out. I had never realized that layer of it, like just how thoroughly convinced Cowboys fans can get very quickly after reading the heights of frustration to, okay, now we're winning again, and we're in the midst of a regular season, or free agency has started and my Cowboys can't do anything but make themselves closer to a contender because I think shock and disbelief best describes the reaction to this free agent approach. Once again, literally 12 years in, it's yeah. it's it's fascinating that like the optimism can maintain well, that high of a level. You, you see what Philadelphia is doing. I'm not worried about the commanders or the Giants, but Philadelphia has a similar roster to you, and they continually able to add players, wheel and deal, 
you know, move on from players, get players. You know, Cowboy fans are like, wait a minute, how are they doing that? You know, and how do they pay their quarterback? How are they paying all their guys and still have the financial flexibility to do that? I'm sure I'll get a text here in the next three minutes explaining to me why they do that. Yeah. But, but yeah, that's the unfortunate thing about it is Cowboy fans are looking at it going, well, wait a minute, how, how are they able to do this? Well, how, I, I mean, and, and, and you're specifically pushing, and you're what pushing, the Eagles. And you push more and more money into the future. Yeah. You know, you push well, more and more dead money into the future. When the Eagles are bad, they take advantage of it. They're like, hey, this thing has run its yeah. course. It's time to kill all of our dead money so we yeah. can get back at it and be aggressive. You can be aggressive three or four years in a row and have a target year that you're going to destroy. We're going for it, and until we win the Super Bowl, we're pushing it. Like, if 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 Tom Brady doesn't walk away, Tampa would still be figuring out ways to pull money from the future and think as soon as Tom Brady retires, we are going to blow out all this you know uh, dead cap that we have sitting here. The Cowboys won't use that strategy. That's another thing the contenders are doing that the Cowboys won't. They won't pick a year and say, hey, this year we're going to be bad. Let's set up all of our contracts so we can blow them all off the books in this one year, have a top 10 pick for an actual elite or premium player, and then you know, reemerge as contenders the following year. It's it's one after another. And reading stories like this, it clarifies Stephen Jones has a very good grasp on all of the dynamics of this market. They just intentionally choose this path. And I think because it's so unbelievable, every year we think, well, this is going to be the year they snap out of it, Wolchuk. But they yeah. don't. Because they always, they're, oh, well, we got the cap, the cap, the cap. But then they never have, the, the cap's never stable. And maybe this is the year. Maybe them not doing anything and sitting back this year and next year, they're doing that. Because they, yeah. they're going to be paying Michael Gallup. They're saving $9 million. They're paying $8.5 million next year in yeah. dead money for him. Ezekiel Elliott, they're paying this year in dead money for him not to be on your football team. We can go down the list. There's probably more players that we can name. But I don't know when it comes to the fan base. I think there's a lot of fans that do reach out to us that agree. They yeah. are frustrated. Very. But I do think that there is also a large portion that when we show up to Oxnard that they don't care. It's still it, it's going to be the same. They're going to be buying all the merchandise. I, I don't it's know, It's still man. their Dallas Cowboys. We'll find out day one no, when we I, walk in there. No, and I absolutely. think that place is still going to be a madhouse, man. I think, I think even the hardcore fan realizes the frustration of not playing championship football. You know, and you couldn't have had a better situation than they got to get to the second seed and to go out there and pee down your leg like they did. <laughs> yeah. Disgusting. I mean, that that to me... It was a full-fed grumper, bro. It's yeah. not the hardcore they, they, fans. They, they, they went number two scale. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's not the well, hardcore I, fan I'm, I'm worried about. I think those people... No, no. Yeah. I, think the, I think there's some hardcore fans that are like, they're tired of this S. They are. They really are tired of this S. Like, okay, what? where's the loyalty to us? You know, yeah. where's the... where where. We're buying in. We're all in. What mm -hmm. the hell are you doing? We love the Cowboys. One of the Cowboys yeah. are going to love us back. Uh, Great stuff, Brian. Uh, no, I love it when you get like that. Uh, well, I think that's what the Cowboys need. Well, they need. Yeah, they it's, do. They uh, need their fan base to like to, to keep just, them accountable. To keep them accountable. Yeah. You know, if you're going to keep us accountable for what we say, really keep them accountable for what they're doing. So yeah. discontinue your season tickets. <laughs> Don't yeah. show up to Oxnard. Yeah. Yeah, no. I mean that's uh, ultimately, and, and I hate to say that because I and I think there's a lot of people that wouldn't do that. I've had a family member that has season tickets that reach out to me. What should I do? It's not a decision that I can make for you. Yeah, but it does seem as though the only way that it will actually ever change is when that wallet starts to get impacted in a negative way. I think they got those season ticket holders trapped because the PSLs. Yeah. You, need a, you need a license. I don't know to how that all tickets. works. That, we, very, that, that very team will always be. make yeah. money. It we, just always will. It's got too many sponsorship deals and stuff yeah. like that. They're not going to lose And good for money. them. I, I give them a great. Go out and do that. Just also give us a winner. Please. That's just, the just most important a championship yeah. No, that's the most important Not just 12 games if, and then hey, crap down your leg in the playoffs. If, I, I'm, a, if I'm the fan base, I'm, I'm demanding it. I am absolutely demanding it right now.